Welcome to the Greenwich Means Business podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Greenwich Means Business podcast. I'm your host, Dardan, and today we are joined by Kate Badai, who is a current student in her third year studying advertising and digital marketing and is also a marketing assistant part time at the university. So, Kate, how did you find and choose the University of Greenwich and your course, Advertising and Digital Marketing? Um, hello, um, thank you for having me, first of all. Um, and how I found my course was actually online. So um, I was really interested to study marketing or basically anything around comms, actually. Um, and when I saw that University of Greenwich has this really cool course um, with language, so my course is actually with language, um, I thought that's the perfect opportunity for me to advance my Spanish knowledge. Uh, I've been studying Spanish for quite a few years. So I was like, perfect, I can actually study this at university. Um, funnily enough, when I got to uni, I was like, um, maybe I should start learning maybe a different language. And I did uh, Mandarin for my first year, which was interesting. Ins- yeah, incredibly um, difficult. So I actually left it um, after one year of doing it. Um, and then I went back to Spanish for my second and third year. Fair enough. And um, so what got you into the comms kind of uh, industry or the marketing side? So what kind of persuaded you to pick that um, industry to study? Yeah, so um, I really didn't know what I wanted to study, actually, Um, but I knew, so kind of my friends and my family, where they, you know, they said, you're really outgoing, Um, I liked writing and creative writing and all of that, so I was like, um, comms might be the perfect place for me, and um, especially with my course of advertising and digital marketing, I feel like it really marries the two main areas of comms and media, Um, so I really enjoyed it. That's why I basically chose my course. Interesting. So what um, made you select Greenwich? What, what, why was that your final choice? Um, well, I'll be honest, it's because of that kind of with language possibility. Mm. So um, that was kind of really my main focus of, you know, keep studying basically a language, um, you know, after I finished um, my previous education um, and kind of not let that go. Um, so that was the main reason I chose Greenwich because there are no other universities to my knowledge um, offering the course with language. Great, lovely to hear. And you are on your third year now and I, I, want you to, I want to take you back to the beginning. So walk us through your first experience, your first year at Greenwich. So what did you get up to? Absolutely. So um, I lived in Daniel de Halls. That was the, kind of the first place um, I, you know, got to know the uni a bit better, I guess. Uh, but, uh, you know, everyone went through an application process, same as I did as well. Um, and, you know, um, le- you know, lived in halls for my first year and also my second and third year. Um, and basically, I... You know, when I got to the university, I kind of realized, um, and I probably should have done more research about this actually, um, but there's only like eight contact hours a week. So that means you do, well, for my course at least, um, you don't only do eight hours per week for the course itself. And I know there's independent study and all of that, but um, if you really think about it, that's not too many hours, especially in your first year. So um, I, you know, guess that made me have a lot of, I guess, free time. And I decided to do kind of, you know, get myself involved as, as much as I could, um, you know, try to get to know as many people I could and also um, just be um, very pro- proactive and also kind of start building my career. Um, I mean, you, you know, I hadn't like basically when I moved here, I didn't really have like any connections. I mean, I didn't have any connections or uh, any job experience or anything like that. Um, and I know I knew I really wanted to uh, kind of work on that. Uh, so kind of the first couple of couple of first things I've done is joined a society. So I basically joined like four or five societies in the first, my first year. Um, however, you have to remember it was still 2021. So there was a bit of COVID time still. Yeah. So they were not as active and actually I've never returned to societies, which is <laughs> funnily enough, um, <laughs> but also became a, a program rep, um, started career mentoring and also became a student ambassador. So kind of, you know, try to um, enjoy and take advantage as much of the possibilities that you, um, University of Greenwich was offering. Um, and I'm happy to go into it, you know, more details later on and, you know, what they are and how you get into them. Um, but I think they are a really good starting point to start off on. And um, I think it's good to hear for current and prospective students as well, um, not just about my journey, but also, you know, how, how to take really advantage of University of Greenwich and uh, how to, you know, explore the full potential. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And you mentioned you joined about four or five societies. So what were those societies? Yeah. So I joined marketing events, enactors and dance. 
So yeah. Quite a lot. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I probably am missing a couple on the list, but yeah. Yeah. And how did you find juggling all those? Um, did you did you feel like you had enough time to do all of those activities? Um, so I went to the events that they had, uh, but also um you know, it depends on what society, you, you know, you go to and, you know, who do you know? And also it can be quite intimidating because um, so some, societies, some societies are really good with setting up uh, like introductory meetings and stuff. But mm. sometimes that you have the feeling that you're walking into a group that knows each other really, really well. Yeah. And you're kind of that kind of, oh, you know, I'm here. And, you know, and if you are good with communication and you're you know building your network that's not a problem but I can remember back to my first year and I was like oh that's a bit, you know a bit shy and all of that so yeah uh, it's understandable it be, yeah it could be a bit difficult yeah and would you say it helped you uh propel your studies even further by doing the joining these societies or I would say um not necessarily the size societies if I want to be honest but in terms mm. of university has so much other things to offer um in terms of uh, job opportunities you know the career service and so many other different things which I really really recommend everyone to get involved with so um so I would definitely say there are so many other areas as well but I know a couple of good societies at the moment uh, that are doing absolutely brilliantly mm. um so you know if you're interested in any of them I do definitely recommend to join nice lovely to hear and so you just mentioned the uh the job opportunities and you had quite a few positions at the university can you just share what those were and uh how did you get to them what was the process of uh, applying to them and getting the job sure absolutely so um i actually had seven positions under two years Whoa. so seven positions under two years um which is Kind of crazy, yeah. uh, <laughs> even while being a student. Yeah. Um, so I actually had to write it down to remember all of them. So I'm just going to kind of read them out. And obviously we can go into more details if you find any of them interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. So basically, uh, my very first job ever at the university, which I have still to this day, which is being a student ambassador, uh, which is belongs basically under the employability office. Um, and then for the summer, I was a clearing phone operator. Um, and then I became a resident assistant and I've been a resident assistant for two years. So basically for my second and third year, um, I became an employability champion, uh, which is also belongs under the employability office. So I worked for them over a year. Um, then I became a PR assistant uh, for the senior uh, PR manager at the uni, so shout out Tom. <laughs> um, it's, it was really nice to get to know more of that the university from a more official um, side, I guess. Yeah. And then um, my last two positions are actually quite similar in the sense that the title is the marketing assistant. So first I was a marketing assistant for the partnerships team here at the university. And also now I'm a marketing assistant for the learning disability nursing course. Um, very different roles, uh, very different things to do. Um, but all of them, you know, come with great challenges um, and I feel like you know these were kind of all my official I guess paid roles next to all of these roles I actually had quite a few voluntary roles uh, in the GSU for example I've been a student rep for three years and been an NUS delegate last year and also an at school networking officer as well so I feel like we could talk about like a whole separate uh, podcast just on outside of the university as well yeah. uh, but these were kind of my in university roles you know paid and voluntary yeah well, that's quite a lot of roles <laughs> was it difficult to juggle <laughs> Oh, definitely. Um, you know, most of them, I mean, I had at the same time, actually. So obviously, in, naturally, in any job, you have, you know, busier periods and less busy periods. So uh, basically, I always wanted to maximize my time. Um, I'm not sure if you know, but you can only work 20 hours for the university. Yeah. So everything under this list belonged to under 20 hours in terms of I mean, 20 hours max. Yeah. Um, so, you know, most of them I had uh, at the same time, which is obviously a bit difficult to juggle since I'm a full-time student. But um, I think they all set up to for me to, you know, do great things and, you know, get experience and all that. And I think that's the main point of it. Mm. But I'm happy to delve into any of them if you, you know, if you choose one. Um, and then yeah, I can yeah. just delve into how I got them and kind of, you know, share more of my experiences yeah. over there. How about your most, um, what you found the most interesting role? So which one was that? Sure. Um, <laughs> Thank you for asking. Um, so <laughs> basically, my, I guess, favorite role um, was working for the employability office as a, an employability champion. So yeah. individually, I all liked my jobs for different reasons. Mm. So, um, you know, I'm not saying any, any of them is, you know, better or worse than the other. Uh, but kind of my favorite one was working for the employability office, actually. Um, after a year of working there, I got the opportunity to um, kind of project manage Barclays Mock Assessment Center. Um, I nice. love that project so, so much. I actually did it a couple months ago. So basically, we worked with 
Barclays um, to deliver a project on a mock assessment center. So Barclays colleagues actually came over to, the, to Lower Deck actually and um, delivered this mock assessment center for our students, uh, which is amazing. There were over six, um, over 60 students present on the day. Um, and then we had great, great feedback from colleagues over at Barclays. Um, so I think that's a really nice partnership. And we also celebrated our 10 year anniversary with them. So well, it's crazy to think that this happened, you know, for 10 years, um, every single year. So that's just amazing. Yeah. I could get that project. Um, and also I'm really proud of it since it, you know, it had so many positive as feedback. You, as you should. Yeah. It's amazing what, uh, what kind of partnerships the university has as well and yeah. what opportunities students um, get in order to kind of, uh, getting ready for the working world as well. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and so talking about your role in the employability team, so how, what was the process of you getting into it? Um, how was, how did you find it basically? Yeah, so what I would, I think, recommend for all students, um, you know, especially if you're just starting out and you're kind of like scoping your possibilities, um, I would say definitely get yourself a job in the employability office in any way, shape or form. This could be a placement, this could be a part-time role. I, you know, personally, I had this uh, part-time role, um, which required you to have quite a bit of experience. Um, however, if you're thinking of just, you know, you just started the university and you're, you're just getting into it, um, I would say being a student ambassador is the perfect way to get started. So uh, everyone uh, is more than welcome to uh, be or apply to be a student ambassador. Usually they open applications around um, November, uh, November, October, November time. Um, and um, basically it's a normal application process. You don't have to have any experience. And for example, I've done that, you know, from my first year. So that was also one of the contributing factors that I was able to get employability champion since I knew not just the employability office well, but also the people in, in the employability office and also what they do and kind of the landscape of it all. So I think it's always important to note um, how just, you, you know, people talk about, you know, when they kind of, you know, I guess not made it, but in terms of like, um, they talk about more of, the, the roles that they have sometimes like glamorize it a bit mm. but I feel like not too many people talk about when you know how they kind of started and kind of how you know what those were kind of first things that uh, they had to take steps that they had to take to get, get those first experiences to then get to those roles that you actually want to be in and stuff like that yeah absolutely it, it takes a while to even build on experience and then even that's the common problem that most students have as well it's yeah. when when they graduate a lot of jobs um obviously the, a, a big requirement is um, yeah. work experience and whatnot and i don't think a lot of people students understand that as well so oh, yeah. would you would you say so you mentioned before that um uh when you've when you obviously moved into into halls and you realized you had a lot of free time and you use these kind of societies and these jobs to kind of use your time w uh, more wisely basically so would you say that um it, you should rec uh, would you get, would you recommend this to other students for example those who live at home and maybe they have things to do outside of um, university because they, they're stay-at-home students or what do you think yeah no I would definitely recommend I actually will be you know very honest here so in terms of um, you know I interact with students on a daily basis to a very high level just because of all my different jobs uh, it basically requires me to know the student body really really well um obviously being uh you know working in halls and, and through the different things and a lot of students come up to me in their third year maybe second maybe third year and they say to me you know uh, you know you're doing all of these jobs how did you get them and you know ask me questions which is obviously amazing and they say you know um you know i'm you know just finished uni or you know i'm in my final year whatever um you know what do you think i could do or how you know how should i go about it and you know i asked them uh, you know what have you been in terms of doing in terms of preparation for this um in, in the past two three years and most of them tell me nothing or not too much maybe they had a job in terms of hospitality or retail um but usually when you get to that point of you've been working at retail for like two or three years at that point um usually the student come to me with i don't like my job anymore um mm. i really want to work in my you know, degree that, you know, if it's not hospitality, of course, um, but, it, you know, they really want to work in what they're doing in their degree. Yeah, um, absolutely. However, at that point, obviously, you're more than welcome to get started and use an ambassador and, you know, kind of use the tricks I'm, you know, I'm saying today. But also, um, I would say this is a process that you kind of have to start from the beginning. So I don't think it really matters if you're, you know, you're living in halls or you are, um, you know, uh, living at home. That, that really, I don't think it really matters. I think, um, 
you know, one of our main goals, I think, for, for, for everyone, I think, as a student body is to get jobs afterwards. You know, this is a great time. And I'm not saying you should be, you know, only focusing on jobs and stuff. Um, mm. How You know, enjoy yourself, get to know people, um, you know, have great friendship groups. I mean, you will carry this on for, for a while in terms of carrying those friends with you. And, and so it's a really transformative three years of your life. So I definitely do recommend like, getting involved as much as you can. Um, and also, um, there are so many other opportunities besides your course and I think there's also this kind of misconceptions with students is um, the university and I'm happy to talk about basically a bit of a structure here uh, because I think it would have been really helpful if somebody would have gave me that structure when I started uni and how that kind of that pans out so um, I would say the first structure is the university itself in terms of the your lectures, your tutorials, all of your module leaders, course leaders. So yeah. everything that you have to have to do with your courses, that those eight contact hours that you go into, uh, everything to do with that. I, I would say that's one of one just one part of the university, and I think I feel like a lot of students only know that part really. Um, yeah. But I feel like, you know, there are like a lot of other departments and a lot of other things to do. So I would really categorize the second group as the university other, <laughs> which is all of the different supporting functions, um, you know, that comes under either for the support of uh, the students. So it could be services like the employability service, the accommodation services and all of these different things. But um, there are also so many other functions that basically just supports the university running smoothly under the day-to-day -day. Um, yeah. and my third category would be GSU on its own um, so there I think a lot of confusion between you know what is GSU and kind of where that belongs and I definitely understand where the confusion comes from uh, but yeah that's kind of their own separate area so all of the societies and all of the different uh, uh, you know kind of society societal activities you being um, you know opening your own society or student reps um, or uh, officer elections these all belong under the GSU but I think it's a good to clarify where those areas are and so you know what kind of you're stepping into if you're going to an event you kind of know what's going on that's very helpful thank you um, quite a lot of guidance there <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's great to hear from uh, the the perspective of a student as well because obviously we sometimes it's mentioned in lectures and tutorials and whatnot but I think a lot of students kind of bypass that because they maybe they're just like oh like let's get on with this tutorial let's get on with this lecture they just want to focus on their studies basically yes. so do you enjoy guiding stu uh, students uh, through these other sections of university as you mentioned oh yeah absolutely that's one of my favorite things to do actually um and uh, you know, I just wanted to say for anyone listening or whatever, um, if you want to reach out to me, that's absolutely fine. Just follow me on LinkedIn and uh, you can reach out to me with any questions. I'm really happy to guide you through, you know, if, even if you're just starting next year or this year. Um, I also work a lot of like open days and uh, offer holder events and stuff like that in my halls. So basically, I co constantly meet prospective students and, um, you know, they always reach out to me like, hey, how do I do this? How do I do that? And of, of course, it's quite um, nice to see when you've done an event like that and they're like, you know, they move into halls, let's say, um, and, you know, they come up to the, they're like, oh, actually, I really liked what you said about halls and I really wanted to live here. So that, those are really amazing um, opportun opportunities for me as well to, uh, you know, not only talk about uh, my experiences, but, but yeah, maybe to positively influence uh, the students to think about their career. Yeah. Would you, so is that something maybe you would have wished you had in uh, when you first entered university? Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, I can say thanks to a lot of my friends and the people you meet, you will kind of get to know these opportunities by association, I feel like. However, I think it's good to have like a more comprehensive uh, way. And also I think why I can provide quite a bit of value here is because I've probably done most of the things that this university in terms of has to offer. Mm -hmm. um, and I can give you a very good breakdown of I guess what's worth and what's not. So uh, in terms of what will actually excel and kind of the reality of the positions and stuff, um, I can really provide you on a, like a really transparent note on that. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, we've, had quite a few um, first year and um, uh, well students from other years listening to this podcast even have it on this podcast so what is your advice to them in terms of um, you know just any 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 involvement in the in the university so like anything other than extracurricular activities and jobs what else do you have in mind to give them 
Sure, absolutely. So I have a couple of pro tips if you don't mind me sharing. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, I, you know, I talked so much about, you know, student ambassador and all of these different things, but I kind of compiled, you know, in preparation for this podcast, I kind of compiled a small list of things that I think, um, like kind of like a pro tips and kind of just general advice on, on a couple of things. Um, so first of all, read your emails. That's one of my key and most important things. If you don't take away anything else from this podcast, please take away, read your emails. I can vouch for that as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, so many times, I you know was going through my newsletters and found something really cool in the bottom of it that I would never have would, you know, would have checked otherwise so please please do go and check your uh, your emails always I know we got so many of them and I know there's an information overload however there are true gems in there there are um, opportunities that are only accessible for the students of University of Greenwich so please do read them uh, my second one is become student ambassador and sign up to career mentoring. So that would be kind of like, you haven't even touched the floors of the university, do that <laughs> already. Yeah. So that's kind of my number one, like two things that I would say immediately sign up. It doesn't matter what course you do. It doesn't matter if you live home, you know, uh, if you live in halls, you know, if you're an international student, these are the two things that are basically available for everyone at the uni and they are amazing. So obviously I talked about student ambassador a little bit, but it's basically about you getting emails um, and be, it's a zero hour contract you don't have to worry about that um and you know i could have that role for three years in a row because basically it carries three years and basically you can use this as a safety net obviously you can take roles and then in terms of career mentoring i think that's an amazing opportunity provided by the employability office where you are basically mentored by a professional in the field if from google from jp morgan ey and all of these big companies and you know i cannot miss barclays as well so um i had a mentor for all my all throughout my years i had four mentors and all together um and two of them the last two was actually from uh, google so um amazing amazing opportunities there um again this is not for you to get a job it's for you to be mentored by somebody in the professional field and i can really go into details on how to really maximize your relationships in that way um in terms of my next pro tip would be look at job shop on a regular basis so if you have decided uh, that you want to get a job at the uni look at job shop like maybe on a weekly basis and just you know keep checking it regularly those um, positions available will be posted on there uh, if you just type job shop Greenwich um, on, in Google it will come up um, and then just a bit of a second pro tip on job shop if you find a role that you're interested in, and this works for part-time because obviously that's um, where most of uh, my experience comes from, um, when you read the job description, it will say the name of the person um, and then also an email address with that. So I, every single time I've done that in terms of you um, email your the hiring manager or your line manager basically later on um, and you ask for this informal discussion, then um, you have better chances to actually get the job. I've got the job every single time I've done that. So I think it's a really good way that not not many students or I don't think any student is ut utilizing. Um, and again, I can you know talk about what you say there and what you do there uh, to actually you know present yourself in, in you know not in an interview format, but also in kind of this informal discussion format yeah um my next one would be um when you are signing up to be a student ambassador always look for the ongoing opportunities so this is one thing that the uh, student ambassador scheme is really trying to i guess upscale and improve is um having more ongoing opportunities so with student ambassador, you will have two types of jobs. One is one-off shifts. So this would be graduation, open days, offer holder event, and all of these, which is one time, you know, they will say, you know, are you available for two hours? And you say yes, you say no. Um, however, always look for those ongoing opportunities because basically what that means is you're gonna be going into a, diff a, diff a department of the university and working, you know, those 20 hours uh, and you get the those hours consistently. And I, think, I feel like that's what most students are looking for. Mm. Um, my next one is just on application. Um, when you apply, be descriptive and use the STAR method. Um, and even if you don't have experience, um, try to demonstrate them through your life, life skills and experiences. So loads of students come to me. I don't have an experience. I don't know how to get it. I don't know how to you know, get my you know, foot in the door, basically. Um, so I would just say, uh, again, use the STAR method and just try to use your experience at the experiences that you already have maybe in education if you've worked on a group project and all of that everyone has experience and um i'm sure you will be able to utilize them in that way um sorry yes. to interrupt yeah, so sorry. what what is the star method for those who don't know so the star method is basically um gives you kind of like a framework how on how to like um answer questions basically so it starts off but you um 
kind of giving a small review. And then when those questions come in, especially about your experience, like, you know, loads of um, employers like to ask, you know, can you tell me about a time when you, um, you know, worked with a difficult colleague or something like that. So this framework gives you the opportunity to answer those questions in, in a format, in a method that actually um, brings you great results. And also, uh, you know, kind of you're hitting every nail on the head, basically, with that method. Interesting. Thank you. And uh, you're about to uh, go on to another yeah. subject before I interrupted you about the STAR method. <laughs> Sorry, please do. Um, yes. And um, I would just say each time you apply, it will get easier. OK, so I'm on my seventh at the moment uh, and I can definitely tell you this. Um, every time you apply, it will get easier. Um, all of those experiences will build you up. So please do not worry. And, uh, you know, if you don't even if you don't think you can you know, have the role or if you see your friends applying to it and stuff like that, please do apply. Uh, you don't know what's going to come out of it. So please do. Um, and also a bit kind of detouring from from the university a little bit. Um, and I wanted to talk about volunteering, actually. Um, yeah. and I don't think many people consider this as uh, as kind of like a viable way to, to get ahead, I guess, uh, yeah. in terms of because volunteering can be sometimes seen as, you know, um, you know you're on, on you know handing out things or you're going door to door like fundraising kind of things or you know volunteering can come in many different forms but mm. um what really made a difference for me so in my first year as i mentioned i had quite a bit of free time so along with the societies along with my all my roles at the university i actually started volunteering for reach out and that that has been such an amazing and transformative experience so I, obviously I had so much free time and I was like you know what let me do this in terms of this is a um, reach out is a mentoring charity so you go into a school and you mentor a young person and uh, through there you know if, if they have learning a difficult uh, learning difficulties or any kind of difficulties basically um, and you give them confidence and there are like different methods and um, it's a really amazing way um, I've done that for six months and basically halfway through the program obviously it's a volunteering role you don't get paid for it but they give you other opportunities, um, which I didn't know about at the time. But basically, um, through volunteering, I was able to apply for a position in an Australian financial company. So uh, I actually did a part-time placement throughout my second year in, I think, the fifth largest Australian bank. So wow. yeah, so um, and you know, so people undermine sometimes volunteering a bit. Um, but again, there is nothing better than giving back to the community, truly. Um, like I can still remember my mentee uh, when, when I was mentoring him and, um, you know, the confidence that it gave him, the boost that gave him. So, uh, and obviously that I was able to embark on a journey uh, in a very professional, very professional, very corporate life. Um, I think that's absolutely special. So um, I would definitely recommend not just volunteering for Reach Out, but volunteer in general um, because first of all again you don't know who you're going to meet and uh, so many companies supporting these charities um, so you really don't know where you're going to end up really. So you've done a lot of volunteering would you say that's a, a gateway to not just your professional career but also for yourself really like uh, it makes you a better person? Yeah no absolutely I think there are a bunch of different opportunities to do and get yourself involved with and also you're helping your local community and also get to know your local community better which is I think for I think it's amazing um, and also uh, I kind of promised myself I will never stop volunteering after that so um, I actually been volunteering for Mayor's Fund for London for two years now um, and basically I sit on their youth board so basically I work with MFL which is Mayor's Fund for London the charity and kind of hold them accountable with the rest of the youth board to uh, you know make decisions kind of youth led decisions um, and you know that's been a fantastic experience so far as well. Nice. And how did you get involved in that? Because this is obviously outside of the university's um, opportunities. So yeah. How did you get involved in that? So I actually applied. So they had the uh, enterprise challenge um, and they were looking for interns. And actually, you didn't get the intern position. I applied for that. Um, but then when I saw that they had this youth board, which is a voluntary role, not a paid position, uh, I was like, I really like the, the charity. I researched the charity already. Um, I really like the people there. So actually, I you know really want to be involved. So this is you know I applied, I got through the application process, and you know been there ever since, which is over a year and a half now. So yeah, nice. long time. Yeah. Um, yeah, quite quite the workaholic you are. That's a, that's a lot. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> there's a lot of a work to do, uh, that you're involved in. Yeah, just a bit. And I think I would just like to touch on my last point in terms of my last tip. I know I've been yeah. <laughs> telling some stories. Well, the more, the more tips, the better, honestly. <laughs> Amazing. So um, my last and final tip would be around networking. Um, I think people, again, kind of underestimate this and, um, you know, especially students and especially don't know where to start. 
If you follow any of the steps I just talked about in this time, uh, you will be put into the room to succeed, okay? So you will be put into a room at JP Morgan, you will be put into a room in EY, you will be put into the room in different places. What the question is, what will you do that with that opportunity? What will be your next step? Um, what I see, and I can literally talk about last week, so um, I was at JP Morgan with the career mentoring team last week with a bunch of different students. We had maybe 10 JP Morgan um, colleagues in the room. What I've seen there is obviously people, you know, matching up with their mentors and talking and all of that, but most of the students who had not necessarily a, a relationship with any of the people in the room, they started talking to each other and go to the back of the room. And that's absolutely fine if you want to do that. But I feel like there is an opportunity there that you can really, really take. So again, using your networks, but also how do you build those networks and what do you say and how do you act in those um, circumstances is really, really important. And obviously, I can go into more detail in that. But um, what I wanted to really suggest is basically network through practice. So this is something that you kind of have to go and practice and I, I know it's sometimes really awkward and what do you say and you know how do you go up to them and um, I know those first couple of moments will be a bit awkward if you if you will yeah um, however however if you just try and try again those situations will come naturally you will know kind of what to say what ask, what questions to ask you will be able to follow up you will be able to ask them on linkedin not in a creepy way but just in a in a more get to know and networking way and kind of build your experiences through that and also what is really really key and what i've learned a lot from you know career mentoring and, and just in in general is um those professionals in the room or those professionals on in your linkedin network will have the information that probably you are looking for. So, um, you know, I don't have the, the knowledge on, you know, what are the positions, for example, in an advertising agency, just because I've never worked in one. So I will have no idea what are the positions. And um, if, you know, there is one thing about positions, you know, that they can be so varied. Sometimes yeah. you can literally say like relationship director, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are, you know, so many different roles that you would actually don't really know what's, what, what it entails or what the day-to-day -day like, but those people in the room know. So those people, you know, in your networks, um, in, in the room, you know, in the career mentoring or in, in an office visit, they will know. So, you know, having these people in your kind of back pocket, I feel like that you can, you know, I've seen this role, you know, do you think I would be a great fit or this and that? They will know what those roles entails and involves. And then they can literally say, hey, like I've seen your experience. I've seen, um, you know, kind of how you, you're around people or whatever. Or like what, you know, are you outgoing? Are you more shy? Um, and they will, they will be able to say, yeah, I think that you would be great in this position. Again, this is not about them giving you a job, but in terms of you will be able to access that information. Um, so again, you will be put into the room to win uh, and to kind of utilize those networks. So please do when you get there. Yeah, 100%, I agree. So it's all about practicing and making it part of your routine to kind of, you know, go out of your way to speak to professionals and whatnot. Yeah. And that will always open up doors for you. Absolutely. If it, not necessarily jobs, as you said, but 100%, any information that could lead you to progress your career. Absolutely. Yeah. And back to you and your career yeah. um what do you hope to do next what what is next for you after you graduate what do you hope to do very good question um that's that's actually a question for me as well so um <laughs> all of these things that i just talked about and you know the seven positions and you know working for a financial company and all of these things um provided me with a wonderful wonderful experience base that i can go now and and utilize for my next next move career move i would just say like follow me on linkedin to find out because i actually don't know myself yet um but um i think uh, it's a really important to kind of reflect on the past and reflect on on what you have done and you know even if you're in the, your third year now and you're looking back at it um and you know the things you've done please do reflect on them and you will have those experiences to then you know get you to their next job so even for me there are so many opportunities in terms of with my degree or you know kind of without my degree in terms of if i don't um, intend to go into my degree field but um you can go and join the graduate scheme you can do internships you can do very, you know, very different things. Uh, but personally, I don't really necessarily know what's come, what comes for me next. Yeah. Uh, do you, uh, so do you hope to stay in advertising and marketing or do you still, are you still like on, on the fence? Like you don't know whether you want to change, have a career change or whatnot. Cause obviously you're, you were exposed to a lot of, um, 
uh, different careers by working in employability office and getting involved with students and mentors and whatnot. So yeah, yeah. Do you think that it, you haven't selected your industry yet, or? I, yes, that's one of the questions because again, you have to remember um, communication and marketing and advertising is very, very versatile. You can literally go to a financial company and do marketing for them. So in terms of you know looking for your industry, it's kind of like you know what aligns with you, but also there are so many opportunities, and I feel like especially true with marketing you can really go into any route that you want and just basically you know kind of you touched on but you know me kind of talking to those uh, you know mentors or people you know in their professional career like advanced professional career um none of our roads and not, none of their roads are linear everyone had so many different things and i can just think of so many times when they said you know i don't like biology or something very unrelated and they are you know vice president of jp morgan at the moment so it's in terms wow. of like yeah so in, in terms of you know in a financial very uh, financially related area so none of our roads are linear and um i definitely think there is definitely potential for me to not necessarily go into the traditional like advertising route um but don't know where that industry is yet well i hope what you find uh, you're happy with and whatnot thank you <laughs> and um so uh, it's been a very uh, you've an, I think you've answered pretty much every question every student had in year one and year two. <laughs> <really> so <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, one hundred percent you have. Um, so if anyone wants to reach out to um, Kate, um, if you didn't access this podcast through LinkedIn, um, we will be tagging um, Kate through the uh, well tagging Kate's account on LinkedIn when we advertise this podcast. So feel free to reach out to her if you have any questions and whatnot. But thank you very much, Kate. It's been a pleasure yeah. having you on board. No, and thank you for having me. <laughs> Pleasure. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. You can find our podcast on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts. Subscribe to never miss an episode.